Hi, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens. In this episode, I'm doing an unboxing of Warfare Modern Tactical Combat. It's designed by Paolo Ciarlo and Carlo Amadio. This is from WBS Studios out of Italy. This is obviously a modern tactical combat game. It is for one to four players. It's definitely a new take on quick skirmish action. So let's dig in the box, see what you get inside. All right, so this is a big box. It's kind of a, I guess it's an A4 uh, size being from Europe. So it's a little bit bigger than a standard sheet of paper and it's pretty thick and it feels pretty heavy too. So it's about a three inch box. Take a look on the back here real quick. Warfare Modern Tactical Combat is an asymmetric game set in deadly modern war zones. Operate in urban and rural areas facing elusive enemies. Unleash military power and superior technology or use your knowledge of the terrain and local population support to defeat the enemy. You can play as a regular army, you can play as a surgeon, and I believe you can play against the AI because it does have, uh, it is like I said, rated for one to four players, plays in about 90 minutes, 15 and up. Features the US Army, US Marine Corps, British Army, es Esercito Italiano, Army de Terra, French Bundeswehr, Germany, Army of, Army of Rossi, Russian, Japan Self Defenses Forces, the Republic of Korea Army, the People's Liberation Army, the Generic NATO Army, the Generic Eastern Army, and Insurgents. All right, made in Italy. Very cool. The box is the box is kind of thin, but uh, I mean it's it's I get when we say thin now it's kind of like normal size. So a lot of the weight is going to be coming from the contents, not from the box. So. All right, starts out, get a bag of standee holders. These are your you know, standard plastic, which is really cool that it's got standees. I'm sure you could replace these with miniatures if you wanted to. There's a lot of these, a lot of these plastic uh, uh, standee holders here in this bag. Quite, quite a lot of them. So that's pretty cool. And then red cubes for tracking wounds get a baggie of those and then we've got oh but wait there's more standee holders there's a lot of standees going here so very interesting all right so we'll put those there we've got some more cubes here these are all kind of in different colors we've got a gray orange yellow white green blue black red so i don't know what the difference is between this red and this red but you got those there too. So we've got a loose die, a couple of die down here, standard, your standard dice. Let's see, there's more. Nope, oh, it's a six sided die, small six sided die. Looks to be maybe eight millimeters. I mean, it's like it barely rolls three. And then you've got a 20 sided die, and this is a 20 sided, it's not a count up. You can see the numbers are not sequentially arranged. So, 10. All right, but then we've got these custom die. These are six sided. They have a variety of colors. No duplicates. So, we've got a white, black, blue, gray, red, yellow, purple, kind of a magenta, and a green. And they obviously seem to be all different sides. This has a arrow and an X. This one has a thumbs up and a, another symbol. A hit symbol, I guess. Two hit symbols, two thumbs up. So probably based on the weapon and your defense. The black one has quite a few skulls on it. All right, so you get, there's what, eight of those? Nine custom dice, and each one's different. Get those. Uh, it looks like this this bag was oh this bag had the dice in it. So. All right, and then we have rate this game and get a promo. We'll search this game on Board Game Gulag. It actually says Boad Game Geek, but I assume they mean Board Game Geek. Contact us via email and receive a promo within a few days. So I wonder what the promo is. Interesting. 
All right, and now we've got a, looks like a dice translation sheet here. And we are in two different languages. We've got, I assume that's gonna be Italian. You have Verde, Rosso. And for this channel, we got English. So the white, so each one increases in uh, points that you spend, and I assume are more powerful. So the white die is one action point all the way up to black, which is nine action points. And it tells you what the die faces are. So the white die has four blank sides and then two, dis two distinct sides. And this one has three, two, one. So you can see the breakdown there of which dice you use and how many action points you're gonna pay to use it. All right. And then we've got what appears to be oh, an action track. I was going to say turn tracker, but apparently you're tracking your action points here. Turn one through six, and then up to 40 action points, working your way down. So there is that. And it's double-sided, but you're only ever going to use this side. But nice graphics. It's kind of thin, but it's just going to basically set on your table, so it's not too bad. And then we've got our terrain boards. All right, well, big stack of terrain boards here. And they are single-sided. I mean, excuse me, excuse me. They don't fold out, and they're single panels, and they appear to be geomorphic, and they do have hexes on them, which is kind of nice. Instead of just being, you know, open, so it's it's miniature. It's not miniatures; it's standees, but I guess you have movement within hexes for the game. So we've got a plane. I'll turn it sideways so they show better. So we've got a plane green side, and they did number them, which is good. A lot of times you see these games and they don't number them, so you can't find the ones you need without looking at the terrain intently. So this is 1B and 1A. 1A looks like a... I'm gonna see, yeah, it looks like air conditioning. So I assume it's an overhead of a city. And these are buildings, and the buildings don't really correspond to the hexes, so don't know how that translates. Yeah, here's some trucks, you know, parked here. So obviously not to scale with the standees. They're more kind of an abstract representation of an area. Got some roads on the side of this one. There's a huge, huge stack of these boards. Let's take a quick look at them. Let's go through them real quick. Here's two B, or not two B. It's a field, followed by another city. And it is different. It's not just the same city tile. So obviously, geomorphic, as they go together, you've got a couple of roads there, or you connect them end to end, and the roads continue. All right, three. Big field. Uh, I guess I, mean, I think you can see these lines here. I don't know if those are terrain increases or if they're just, you know, artwork, like to define this field or something. And then another city area. So it looks like we got urban and rural combined. So we've got a little lake, big field, some hedgerows around the fields of trees, and another city with like a garden in the middle. A forest, this is five. Forest or city, got like a football stadium, soccer stadium. They're pretty thick, seem to be a pretty good thickness. See them up there. Again, a forest, half forest, half field, another city. Mostly field, a little bit of forest. Another city, some open areas here. That's seven. We got eight. See? Nine's like all forest. Let me pick them up here. All forest, all city. Looks like a kind of a chemical plant. And then here we got a field. It's like a Lighting for a landing strip or something, maybe. And again, another city. City, you know, urban terrain, I should say. It's not an actual city. Now we're at 11. So the B side is rural, the A side is urban. 12. Nice, nice relief here for the th kind of a 3D effect. Oh, I thought I got a crossroad here. 13. 
Oh, now we got like a urban field going on here. Maybe it's more desert as well. You can see this has definitely got a green and this has got a kind of a tan motif. Interesting that uh, some of these areas have, like this has diamonds in the center. These other hexes have no center marking. And then on this one, for example, it has circles in the center and then the rural has diamonds. So this is board 14. Yeah, this looks like a prison or a POW camp. It's got some barbed wire going around the parts of it. 15. A couple of hills. And then some desert, desert hills. All right, now we've got a rural like town. A little mini town there. Followed by some more, more desert terrain. So I take it back. I'll say it's the B side is more forest, green area, and the the A side is, is desert area. But did seem to be mostly industrial and, and urban. So we got another B side, 17. And looks like we got a river here. Like we got little water waves going through the center. So these symbols may mean something different, like a change in elevation. That's why there's circles, maybe circles of depression. And then the diamond is a, is a raised area or level one, level two. So there we got a bridge. And finally, board 18, got a downed fighter jet there in a field. And then the river. So those are your 18 mm, geomorphic map dials. Oh, I'll take it back. We got 20. We're out of out of stack. So here we'll look at uh, this number 19. A little airfield, helicopters, and then more river. And then number 20 is a beachfront area with a little warehouse district. All right, now we've got our punch boards here. A little loose piece of something here. I don't know what this is. It's just something came off. All right, and then we've got our punch boards. It's uh, three, looks like. Three punch boards. And these have got our, uh, what are we gonna use all our standees with? So we've got, as you can see, soldiers vertical here. We got some helicopters, we got some running soldiers. Got some tanks, some uh, got a Hummer, uh, various graphics, nice artwork, kind of watercolor, a watercolor effect here, and then on the back there are all their stats. So, like some games, this this sheet appears thin. Then when you punch out a counter, and it's pre-rounded too, which is nice. I say counter, it's actually a standee. You got your soldier on one side and his stats are on the back. US Marines, white, and he's got his, all his stats. He's got his country symbol on there and various stats, which we don't know what the stats mean yet. But I assume it's gonna be your traditional movement, shoot, range. So that's uh, counter sheet one. It looks like you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So 72 on this page. And just looking at the back here, it looks like we've got, we've got UK, we've got generic, we've got Germany, um, US, several US. So that's counter sheet one. And then we've got counter sheet two. Again, another assortment. So our blue, it's the uh, Republic of Korea. Looks like we got Italy in green. And we got some here with an orange effect to them. They are, let's see, Russia and other countries here. So again, another mix of tanks. And again, all the stats are on the back. And 
That's that was sheet two. And these are the counters. So they call them counter sheet one and counter sheet two, and then they say these are the counters because these are going to be your markers. Um, we have our insurgents on here. I assume we do. Uh, oh, and the insurgents are green. Green is not Italy. Green is the insurgents. So the other countries are all represented in the in the other sets here. And then we've got markers here. You got plus one or less than one health. So we've got a directional marker. Uh, we've got snipers. Italy snipers, U.S. Marine Corps snipers, U.S. snipers, Russian snipers, insurgent snipers, and the various, looks like uh, language is not gonna be too necessary here. It's all iconography. Of course, understanding the iconography is gonna rely on the rule book. We got some question mark counters here, which may be events that you draw or damage that you draw. They're marked question mark on the back. And these are about one inch, I would say, maybe maybe seven eighths inch when you punch these. These others are about seven eighths by about an inch and a half, inch and a quarter. Then we have our rule book. And it is, there's a download code for additional resources here. I don't wanna give that code away in case you're not buying the game, but. Um, so the rule book is about 58 pages, 64 pages. The index only goes to 58 pages. So we get our scenarios after that too. And how to play solitaire. So it is on matte paper. It is full color. So it's very nice that it's not glossy. That's a very big plus. It is on large A4 paper, um, which is fine. It's just European standard. So the components list, 20 double-sided map tiles. We saw those, you got 144 unit counters. We did that. 88, 88 20 millimeter markers. Action track, multicolor activation cubes, red cubes, the SCS dice set, a six sided die, a 20 sided die, the die console, the multiplayer, player age sheet, the multiplayer solo age sheet, multi-page multiplayer solo, multi-page solo age sheet, and the rule book. And you set up the game, mount some components, Maps and dials. It seems like they're the standees in play. And it goes through the rules. So chapter one is covering movement. Chapter two is line of sight. Uh, how to determine line of sight. Chapter three, it, it, it's more than that. It's like combat. I really don't understand how the chapters are divided here. In this chapter, you learn to move units, deal with civilians and mobs, place remove roadblocks, and load, transport, and unload units onto vehicles. So it's it's a reasonable size text. It's not super large, it's not super small, and there are lots of graphic images to guide you through the process. So that's very cool. Place your box and see, okay, this is great. That's why how they divide the chapters. They teach you some stuff and then you play the scenario. So after chapter one, you play scenario one. And then you'll go through and read chapter two. Line of sight, firing. It looks like they have, this is great. They have QR codes here that you can scan to watch a video showing how to carry out that rule. So there's a line of sight rule uh, video. There's suppression and rallying rule video. So you can just scan your phone and watch those. That's very cool. So then again, you can play scenario two, save the hostages after you read the rule. So it guides you through learning. It's a very nice way of doing things. It seems like each chapter does that. And each chapter gets smaller. Chapter five is only on two pages and you play scenario five, secure the bridge. So very nice. I'm very excited about this one. So then training scenarios, winning hearts and minds solo, clearing the farm solo, is this the... Solitaire starts on 52. Let's go take a quick look at how that plays out. 
Okay, Solitaire. Solo playing warfare is based on the mechanics involving orders and execution. The player typically receives an order and execute it. executes it. Depending on his preferred approach, he can play in manual, semi-auto, or full auto mode depending on his preferred approach. In manual mode, the player executes commands alternately for each side. This mode allows for hot seat style of play and the asymmetric warfare presented in the game. Along with the activation point system, still offer a challenging game experience. Semi-auto and full auto modes rely on order and execution mechanics however the modes differ in how order execution is achieved in full auto the player follows the instructions provided by the system with minimal input in semi-auto the player can balance between manual and full auto by executing the order in the best possible way so that's pretty pretty neat you can so you can either true solo just playing both sides or you can have some input where you can edit it uh, you know overrule it if you need to or you just play and and do what the system decides so that is cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So let's see, where? Single scenarios, 35. So the scenarios actually start, the solitaire system is after the scenarios. So you go in here and you get to two training scenarios and then you get to the single scenarios. Checkpoint pasta, one to two players. And so you get the, the maps go long. So you got eight eight maps in this game. Yeah. Annihilation is one to two players. Got eight maps. So it looks like six maps. Danny Boy. Also, so they're all for one to two players, it looks like. Very nice. Very cool. So it looks like there are documented or set up pre-set up there are 16 missions included in here and i believe it has a mission generator as well on page 24 so mission generator allows you to create random scenarios and make the game more exciting and long lasting it can be used as a standalone option for a single mission or generate random missions throughout the campaign and there's a campaign mode as well solo two players and multiplayer so that is the rule book and then you know what, that's not a stamped code, so we'll just leave that. And then we've got those player reference sheets here that we got. So we've got the multi-page um, I assume this is going to be for solo because it's multi-page. It said it was a multi-page solo and it doesn't say what it is, but I assume this is the AI uh, system because you're going to roll 1d20 activity is going to be this and then you've got these flow charts to determine what the unit's going to do so they did not title this you got the charge of title deliberate attack execution table defend and sector sector execution table defend a battle position execution table movement to contact execution table so I'm going to just assume this is the solo uh, flowchart system. It's on a very nice, kind of a matte uh, coated stock. So there's a little bit of sheen to it, but it's not a not really glossy in your face with your lights, which is very nice. So that's, that's there. And then we've got a double width, A4 double width uh, fold out chart. This has got a terrain chart. Yeah, and there's our diamond that tells us uh, what type of ground. It's high ground, fortifications, clear, has no hex, water, and who can go in it, and what their movement parts, movement points would cost, or action points in this game. So that's your terrain chart, and then you've got a test chart for testing various uh, abilities and special abilities. So some of the abilities we have is rally, uh, civilian mob, rec recon, clearing mines, removing roadblocks, martyrdom, assault, suppressive fire. And then there's special abilities chart noted here. And then there's the line of sight chart. Golden rule, number one, line of sight is never blocked between two adjacent hexes, no matter what. Line of sight between two hexes is always blocked at the elevation of intervening hexes higher than both. And it's got some nice, you know, uh, 3D representation showing you what you would be able to do and see from the uh, unit's point of view. So that's very nice that it's included. Very cool. Very, 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 very cool. Let's see if we can get it all back in the box. 
So if you pick up a copy of Warfare Modern Tactical Combat, you are going to get the terrain chart and, uh, and action reference chart that we saw, the solo uh, management chart. You're going to get that 64-page rulebook, three sheets of counters, two sheets of standees, and one sheet of markers. You're going to get 20 double-sided geomorphic map tiles. You're going to get one 20-sided die. You're going to get one six-sided, small six-sided die. You're probably going to want to replace that with your own die. That's kind of a sad point here is that, that little tiny die. Uh, you're going to get that uh, action point combat dice system. There's nine distinct dice with nine distinct action points. Not, um, eight tracking cubes. A bunch of wound counters. The action point tracking and turn tracking chart. The one, the dice uh, translation table, basically. A rate this game, get your promo promo card. And two bags of uh, standee holders for all those standees in the game. That is pretty cool. And that, and the baggie. And that is everything in Warfire Mod Warfare Modern Tactical Combat from WBS, designed by Paolo Paolo Ciarlo and Carlo Amadeo. Thanks so much for watching. God bless you. Bye bye. Oh.